Guys, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, this is a stream, as I said, it will be focused on mission making. But to be really specific here, we're going to be covering um, specifically making missions with the framework that uh, we developed in Broma. If you play with any other group and you would like to bring, you know, the missions that you made using our framework, this group, you can. It's totally fine, you know, it's not anything that we, like, we restrict to our group, like, um, like for example, the, the Tech Tech framework. So, it's totally fine. The only thing that we ask is that, just, you know, don't, don't be a fucking dickhole and say, like, hey, guys, this, we, you know, we made this in our group. Uh, you know, you know the deal, you know, you don't have to go out of your way to credit whoever made this, just don't go out of your way to stealing it. Other than that, it's completely fine to use, modify, the source code is in GitHub, um, you can download it, explore it, like, on your own body, and it's totally fine. So, to get started on what the framework is. The frame. Uh, whenever you make a mission in Arma, there are shit tons of things that you need to be aware of. You know, you need to make the spectator, the loadout, the, you know, other scripts, like, for example, ending the mission, objectives, stats. There are fuck tons of shit that you need to be aware of whenever you're making a mission. And, it, and again, it's like, it's really easy for one of these things to break. And you're going to be left out, you know, with a, a mission that's well designed, well done, but if that one little script breaks, there you go, you're fucked. It, it, the, the whole mission is going to have that little, you know, broken feel to it. Even though you worked really hard on getting a good design uh, for your units, for your loadouts, and you had an con interesting content mission, and trust me, we've seen many fucking missions who just kind of broke down to shit, you know, just simply because they had one of their features uh, not working at the time. In order to avoid that, we basically said, okay, let's get all these scripts, let's get all the shit, work it to the point where it's like reliable and good, and, re and just release it as a, a, a ready package. That you can just get that and build your mission on top of it. Right? That's the whole concept of the framework. So, what we're going to be doing now is, I will be covering from downloading the framework, from getting it done, opening it up, and from that package that you download, you transforming it into a ready mission. Okay? I will be putting this later on on YouTube. It will be on the end of this channel for as long as um, Hitbox allows it to be. But the plan is, yeah, to, to have this on YouTube as soon as possible. I will post an announcement, so don't worry about that. I see people are mentioning the possibility of this being Armor 3, <clears throat> and this is a coincidence because uh, as of this weekend, I reached a point where, you know, I can say that the, the, the Armor 3 version of the framework is also uh, satisfactory. So, yes, expect a release of the, the Armor 3 framework and possibly a tutorial very soon. But for now, this will be focusing on the Arma 2 version. Alright? So, let's get started. When you download the Arma 3 framework, my, my bad, when you download the Arma 2 framework, the first thing you're going to notice is that it comes off as a map on desert. It's not going to be on, on Chernarus or, 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 or Pakistan or any specific map. It comes on desert. And a lot of people ask me, okay, so how do I change that map to something else? And that in itself, it's a, a little bit, uh, it can be complicated or a little bit overwhelming at first, but it becomes a very automatic thing that you do, like, okay, just copy this, copy that, copy this, and there we go, it's done. Um, when, as soon as you get the framework, what you're going to do is when a 
I'm not going to cover here going and downloading everything. I'm pretty much that whoever is uh, following this video can just go and get it on GitHub. You know, go on the, on the Steam page. It's all there in the downloads and everything. But when you get the, 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 the download, you're going to get this folder. It's called Broma Framework. Um, let's see here. Broma, frame, Broma underscore framework underscore ultimate desert E, right? What you're going to do is you're going to get that folder and you're going to go to your documents and there's going to be a folder called arm 2 other profiles and then you're going to go to your username folder and then in mission, right? You go there and you're going to have a, fold, a bunch of folders where all of your shit is going to be. You go and you extract your folder there. Broma framework ultimate desert E. Okay, just put it there, and from now on, for now on, it's just how we're gonna leave it that. Now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into Arma three for a second. I'm a two. Jeez, what keeps saying my fucking three? Am I retarded? And just gonna take a look at it. Okay. When you first start Arma, it's gonna gonna look something like this. Single player, editor. You're gonna click here in desert, continue, and you're gonna have here what it looks like the editor. It's um pretty empty as you can see. So we're gonna load the framework that we just extracted into our emissions folder. And the way that that is really simple, we're just gonna hold, hit L and select whatever mission we're gonna load. In this case, the Broma Framework Ultimate, as we had just named it. We're gonna click here. Okay, and there you go. This is the layout that m every mission made of the framework starts with. All right, this is how it looks. And it looks at first it may look a little bit cryptic, like what are these boxes, what are these everything. But if you go here and press F6 or go to markers, there are some some little subtitles over these objects which kind of give them some explanation so as you can see here we have um, a DAC zone no idea what that is a DAC camp and we got some units and this example objective well first off as you can see here we got these little boxes with this flag in the middle we got these little guys over here as well Got some, well, you can obviously see some vehicles, some trucks, some air, some aircraft, some helicopters. Intuitively, you can kind of tell that these are the units in the game that we're going to be playing as, and these are the vehicles that we're going to be using. But there are a lot of stuff that no matter how much you play Arma, you're just going to look at this and be, what the fuck is that? A lot of these things, again, uh, it's, you get the experience, but in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the basics that you're going to need in order to make and finish a mission. You need to understand that Arma is huge in terms of content and in terms of mission ma uh, editing content. There's a lot to fucking cover. But in order to make a working, fun mission, you don't, you really don't need to go that far. So. For those of you who are really starting and you tell me, you know, uh, Knife, I don't have any uh, programming knowledge at all, you know, I really don't know how to script, it's fine. Don't be overwhelmed by these things here because they really don't have anything related to programming or scripting to the point that you need to know scripting in order to, to, to make something, okay? So let's just try to go over the intuitive things and then we're going to go to the, the other stuff. So we got those units. Um, we got some, let's see here, mouse over, uh, you know, hovering the mouse over things also really helps a lot. We got a field hospital, a medical supply box, let's see here, we got a medic, uh, this is your squad leader. So we can tell that these are units. Over here, we got a bunch of stuff, well it says these are the default modules, but here's the important part, don't mess with them, ignore it, this is not important, fuck this. And up here we have what it's dubbed as the DAC zones. Um, guys, there's one other thing. People are saying that my microphone is really quiet. And I would turn my microphone up, but the thing is that I have a lot of microphone noise. My microphone is a piece of shit. It's the only one I have. And I will try to at least increase it. It's 
bad. Just to, just think through, think through that just a little bit, but we may get like uh, pretty buzzy a little bit here. Um, let's see. Okay, is this any better? Like any easier to 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 hear? Well, either way, um, <clears throat> I really can go much much louder than this. It's really gonna sound terrible. So going back, DAC is this thing that we use um, that we use in in Arma. It's this 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 little add-on script made by this guy called Solola, a German guy, and it means dynamic AI creator. And it's something that's really overtaken, you know, ARMA mission making by a storm, you know, to the point that even Ace developers, you know, uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure if Sectac uses this, but I know that UO became a, a really big fan of this. And what DAC does is that exactly as the label uh, uh, points out, it's a dynamic AI creator. You basically say, okay, DAC, I want you to go around here and I want you to put these units. And I want him to do this, this, and that. And DAC is going to say, all right, and it's going to do exactly what you tell him to do. Otherwise, without DAC, if you want to make units and you want to make them do stuff, before DAC, what he had to do is he might have to go here. And let's see, I want to make, um, make a Russian here. And it's going to be a guy. Okay. Now I want them to be here. All right. Now I want them to be all in a group. Okay. Now I want them to go here, and I want them to go here. Oh shit! And I want them to go that one point, and I want them to go that one point, and I want them to that one point, and so on, so on, so on. This, as you can probably tell, is very time-consuming, really boring, and although it allows for a greater deg degree of control of where units are going to be. Making a simple mission as this would take you fucking weeks, a long ass fucking time, just to get to the point where you want, right? And it again, you know, you don't you don't need that level of control for a single AI that is gonna get shot down at 500 meters away by some guy of an M16. You know, you don't need to make him go for these super detailed patrols that you set up yourself. When the AI is in the, in the end of it, they don't really have that much long of a lifespan. So DAC is a tool. I'm just gonna go back here. So DAC is a tool that exists in order to say, okay, let's just take away the redundant work, you know, the shit that doesn't really matter, and let's just make something um, more practical and simpler to use. That's the theory, and I know that you're probably thinking, okay, like, oh, that's cool, all right, I get that, but how the fuck am I going to use this? And, again, like with all the things in this framework, it's real fucking simple, so, but you may think, you may think it's hard, but listen to me, it's really easy. DAC divides itself in two types of ways of calling it. You can make a camp or a zone. A zone is when you set up a square, in case in point, this square, and then you say, DAC, do me a solid, and within this square, I want you to put units following these parameters here. So as you can see, it says, blah, 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 I don't care about these numbers, blah, 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 where what is this here? Spawn DAC zone. Oh, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. So within this square, we're going to take these numbers and these parameters, and you're going to spawn a DAC zone. And that's it. That's what it's going to do. It's just going to take the square and put units into this. C'est fini. That's all you need to care about. You know? There is, there is literally no fucking more to it when it comes down to configuring, configuring these units on where they're going to be in the map. It's as fucking simple as it fucking sounds. If you don't want to make the AI do crazy shit, you know, if, they don't, if you don't want to make them be like, you know, 
uh, with really crazy behaviors or, or, or special loadouts or you don't want to configure their skill. You just want to say, put some guys here so we can shoot them for the love of the fucking Christ. That is it. Now come the camps, which are a little bit more complicated, but still really simple. Camps say this. It's the same principle, spawn DAC zone, but if you pay attention, you can see that they have um, different configurations here. And what camps do... Oh, I gotta stretch. What camps do is that they say, I'm gonna, we're going to link them here, as you can see, See this Z1 here? Don't, don't have to pay much attention to it, but here it says Z1. Z1, not by coincidence, is also the same name of this one zone here. So this camp is going to be saying, all right, we're going to be staying here for reinforcements. Whenever this zone here says, oh shit, we're getting fucked, we need reinforcements, DAC is going to go and it's going it's to spawn units in this camp and send them over to this zone. This is mainly what camps are for. They basically spawn reinforcements and send them over to zones that are being under attack. That's fucking it. I, I really wish there was something else to explain about DAC to make it more complex or more complicated, but yeah. For putting DAC zones on the map, that's that's fucking it. Of course, customizing the DAC itself can go a long way. You can really, really make DAC a lot more complicated and a lot more um, customizable, you know, than, than, than what I'm making it out to be. But what I really, really, really want you guys to understand here is that getting the basics, what most people want, which is just, please, for the love of Christ, Put some people here so we can shoot them down and have some fun while we do it. That is super simple. And it can become really fun when you know how to control it and you want to know how to customize the, the relevant stuff, right? So that's mostly what we have here, you know? We got, uh, on, when you get the package of the framework on the editor, that this is what you're going to have. You're going to have a bunch of DAC zones, each one is set up. This one is going to spawn um, uh, Blue 4 US soldiers. This one is going to spawn <clears throat> independent UN soldiers. And if I recall correctly, this one is going to spawn Up 4 um, <clears throat> uh, Takistani militia, I think. Uh, once again, you can customize whoever they're going to spawn. Of course, this is not something that's going to set up. You know, you can change the side, you can make your own units that DAC spawns, it's all very customizable. And here, you have the pre-placed units that you can change yourself. You have um, Blue 4 units, you have Independent units, and you have Op 4 units. So you don't have to go, okay, I want to make a mission. I want to make a mission where, you know, it's like, I, I have like our command structure. So you don't have to go, okay, new mission. Um, I want to have a MVD. Uh, team leader, and then I want to have an MVD um, operator, and then, you know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to waste your fucking time, you know, that it could be done designing the mission, making the fun part of the mission, you know, the, the things that are really interesting for you. You don't have to waste your time doing that boring, useless shit, you know, it's just going to make you tired and, 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 you know, sick of making the fucking missions in the first place, right? So you can just focus on the fun part, which is the design of the mission, instead of doing this boring, worthless fucking shit, which no one likes doing. This is why I think the framework is such a really good tool. You know, it's, it's so useful, because it takes away the, the, the grind out of making, out of making these, these missions. So, I know we've been talking the talk with all how amazing this is, and how cool it is, and blah blah blah. But, you know, I think it's, uh, it's pretty fair if we start doing these things ourselves. So, um, again, guys, this will be on YouTube for further reference. So, I apologize if I'm being too fast, if I'm, you know, speaking, um, you know, if I'm laying down too much information. But, again, rewatch this as many times as you have to. <clears throat> 
feel free to message me in Steam, by the way, if you have some 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 questions. Um, if you don't have me added in Steam, I'm on uh, the Broma group. I'm on the chat right now. You can just double click my name, send me a message, um, ask me questions. Um, I'm gonna ask um, you guys, you know, uh, not trying to be a stick in the mud, but try to keep it relevant, you know, with uh, actual questions, pretty please. But <clears throat> afterwards, if you have something else. Uh, you know, any other questions, you know, send me a message in Steam, drop me a comment on my profile, anything. But I'm always around to an, a, a answer questions. The bottom line is that, um, while well, out, thank you very much. The bottom line is that it, it, we watch this as many times as you have to. I'm going to treat, I'm going to try to keep it as complete as possible, at least for the framework. So anyway, let's move on to this. So I've been mentioning that whenever you start a mission, um, you're going to have in your missions folder a bunch of stuff. There. And all these, all these folders inside of your missions folder are the missions that you're going to see here. If I press load mission and I go mission name, I'm going to see all, the, all this stuff here. These are all folders inside of my, ma my main missions folder, right? That I can edit out and, and, and these are where the missions come from. If I want to make a new mission, however, um, I'm going to need to edit out the map name or where that mission is. And if that sounds a little bit complicated, just direct your attention to your missions folder and you're going to see their call like usually, on the case of the framework, the framework itself is called um, Broma underscore framework underscore ultimate and then there is a dot desert underscore E. Whatever comes after that dot is the name of the map where it's, where it's going to be. That's how Arma is going to recognize where the map is, wh what map, what island that mission is happening on. Right? <clears throat> so... Let's see here. You know what? I'll, I'm I'm taking suggestions. You know, if you guys want a map, a specific map that you want me to make this mission, um, I'll be listening. Let's see what we got here. We got Utes, Fallujah. We got Sarani, Caribou, Thirstless Winter, Bistrica, Bukovina, Trenaras, Lingor, Proving Ground, Shapur. Yeah, we got all this shit here. The usual stuff. I'm really not sure. Um, one map to make this on. Um, Caribou, Douala, what else have we got? Hmm. Um, you know what? Um, that it isn't San Negros last. Uh, you know, like, Billy, that's that's basically the entirety of armor armor con armor two content it's just nigger uh send niggers in lab um this is hard you know what i'm gonna go with uh anog's first suggestion since she was the first one and um i'm gonna go with caribou even though we just made a mission for caribou but you know it shouldn't really matter all right so we load up Caribou Frontier, and you're gonna see, what you're gonna see here is there's not, we're gonna, not gonna go anywhere. We're just gonna go new mission and click OK. The editor is gonna load the mission for us. I'm gonna take a sip of Coke. Okay, sorry, they must have been really loud. Okay, there we go. So now we got the map, and well, you're gonna probably wonder. Where the fuck are our units? How are we going to get started in this? Well, calm your tits, sugar. What we're going to do is, we're going to go to our missions folder, okay? And guys, again, I'm sorry that I can't show you my my uh, my actual windows, you know, uh, on the stream, but I, for now, I'd rather not really risk it. So... What I'm going to do is, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, describe this as best as, as, as I can. Uh, we're going to go to your missions folder, and you're going to get your Broma Framework Ultimate folder, and you're going to make a copy of it. You're going to just go Control C, Control V, and you're going to make a copy of your um, Framework folder. 
All right. Now, what you're going to do is, we need to find out what is the, the editor name of Caribou, right? In, uh, so that we can make our missions on. We know that desert is called desert underscore E, okay? Therefore, it's going to be loaded in desert. But what about Caribou? How do we know what Caribou is? So the, the main pro uh, the procedure to find out a, a map's name is really simple. What you're going to do is you're just going to go, okay, let's just save a mission, just like, you know, blank, okay? Say again, control S to save. Save mission name as blank. And then go to one OK. You're gonna go back to your missions folder and you're gonna see there's gonna be something called um uh yeah, Royal, I'm aware that we can see the desktop. And again, guys, um just to re reiterate, I can't show the desktop. I really would rather not to take that risk. Um one you know, when I added it for YouTube, I'll probably try something but for now I apologies anyway so we have the mission folder and we have this and we're gonna have our new map blank in this case is gonna be blank dot caribou all right but there's another thing we're gonna go inside that folder inside that that blank dot caribou folder and there's gonna be this file called mission dot sqm you're gonna open that file um, and you know what? I might try to have OBS to display my um, my Notepad plus plus. Let me just take a quick quick look. Um, let's see how do I do this thing. Uh um, huh. Subregion display. Ah, this thing is really annoying. Jeez, I feel like an old person trying to fucking mess with these things. Okay, for some reason, Opa Plus Plus really doesn't want to use the subregion thing. Well. Whatever. Um, I'm sh I am sure you guys will be technology savvy enough to to um, to figure out a way to do that. So what you're gonna do is just to recap, you're gonna go to the mission folder in this case blank dot caribou, and you're gonna open the file. And what you're going to do is, it's going to be this thing called mission.sqm. Uh, you know what, I don't really don't like just explaining this like this. I really fucking need this fucking reference. Mm. Yeah, just bear with me for a quick, quick second. I don't really want to... I would really like like to get this thing going, but then uh, no Papalus Plus for some reason just gets it stuck on the um, on some weird part of the um, on some weird part of the, the no plan no Papalus Plus thingy. Uh, okay, hold on. I think I got something here. Oh boy, I'm defeating technology. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, this here is what your mission SQM should look like. It's um you have a bunch of really weird things in here and just to clarify this is basically what your um, what your mission in the editor looks like in text. Okay, be word of a fucking advice. So listen here to me. Be very careful if you're gonna make manual edits to your mission SQM. You can break your entire fucking mission just by being a smart ass and saying, hey, "I'm gonna ignore what I've said and I'm gonna edit it myself because it's a fucking hot shit." Don't do that. If you do it, you're going to break your mission and you're not going to be able to load it. It's going to become 
unloadable, worthless, and you're going to have to scrap it and start it again. So don't be a dipshit and be careful when you edit your mission SQM. All right? That being said, here's what you're going to do. Whenever you make a new mission, it's going to say, all right, I'm going to need these add-ons to start the mission. In this case, since it's a blank mission, it's only going to need the map add-on. Casing point, here we have it, Caribou. So we know that this map is called Caribou. But then, I mean, not that it's called, in terms of the editor, it's referred to as simply Caribou. Now, if you're saying, well, Knife, you obvious motherfucker, of course it's gonna be called Caribou. Duh, you are a dumb shit fuck. Well, fuck you. Because if you go to other maps and you go to Mission SQM, here you go. Thirst Quinter is referred to Thirsk W. Um, I know there's some maps get even worse. Sangin, for example, is referred to as Hell's Kitchen. Now, what the fuck does Sangin have to do with Hell's Kitchen? I don't fucking know. But that's what they're called. So what you need to understand is that not always the map name is just going to be map name in plain text. A lot of map makers choose some really fucking moronic naming standards. I mean, I don't fucking know why they do that. You know, don't fucking blame me. I don't know. What I know is that they do it and you got to account for that. So in order to find out the map name for the add-on, this is what you do. Now let's apply that to our mission. So you have a folder which is copied from the framework, the basis framework. And it's probably still named Desert E. What you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to go to that folder. And instead of Desert E, what are you going to name? You're going to name it Broma Framework Ultimate dot Caribou. Great. Now we got at least a setup. If you go to Arma 2 and you try to load your map, voila. Broma Framework Ultimate. It's loaded. But if you try to load it, it's going to give you an error. Why? Because we didn't add the mission SQM, which is the editor mission part. To do that, we're going to go to Broma Framework Ultimate Caribou. We're going to enter it, and we're going to open the mission SQM. As you can see here, our add-ons are still calling the Desert E, which is not right because, again, this mission is in Caribou. So we need to get rid of this. Desert E, Control F, just, um, uh, just to make sure here, I'm going to drag this here a bit. Oh, the replace window is not appearing on the on OBS. But you know, if you if you, if you select something here on on uh, no plus plus, you're gonna go Control F, replace, and all you're gonna do is go replace Desert E with Caribou. We can replace all, and there you go. Make sure that it have wrap around selected whenever you're doing that. I'm sorry that that it that one appear here. It's um a limitation of um the streaming. So there you go. Now our mission should be all ready and good to go. This this is it. We're done with uh, no plus plus. There we go. If we go now into our framework onto uh, Arma and you select Broma Framework Ultimate, there you go. Boom. It's all loaded. All good to go. Now, I'm not really in the mood of making something super complicated. I'll leave that up to you guys since you're also such beautiful, creative people. So what I'm go I am going to do is just set up a very simple, very, you know, run-of-the-mill mission. Go here, destroy that, capture this, and you're done. That's it. I'm just going to use Blue 4, guys. And same thing of uh, Fighting Op 4. Should really be necessary to change that much. But just so you guys know, the concept always applies the same. You know, it's it's even if you're using blue four, up four, most of the times you want gonna be needing to change a whole lot of stuff. All right, so now we're finally starting to work on our mission proper. Okay, this is finally starting to look like a we're getting to the mission part. So we're just gonna go save it. 
Now what we're going to do is start configuring the units themselves. What are we going to use here? Um, I want this mission to be blue 4, fighting up 4. That means that we're not going to use these guys, these units here. Like, you guys are out of the game. Goodbye. Um, I'm not going to be fighting the blue 4 independents either way, so I don't need their DSD C zones either. So you guys are out. And I'm probably not going to need a camp. I don't think camp is going to be necessary. So you're out as well. So there we go. We managed to trim out a whole lot of shit just by, you know, pinpointing what are we going to want from this mission. So good on us. Congratulations. We're getting started. Now we're going to look at this map. And this is the fun part. And by fun, I mean the not fun part, which, well, it should be fun, but it's just for me terribly tedious is just looking here and thinking hmm I wonder if this compound in the middle of these really generic woods would make for a good firefight and then you say hmm maybe and then you look here and you say hmm I wonder if this compound would make for a good firefight and then you just repeat this with the entire map this process is known as mission making I unless you have a good gimmicky idea that's basically what you're going to be doing in our case, I like this oil bay here. I don't think I've ever been here before. What is this? It's called War District. There we go. Perfect for us. So the mission is Blue Force soldiers come in from the airport, take the road, and their task is capturing these two compounds and the oil bay. Perfect. There we go. So we're going to go here. We're going to grab our guys. Let's put them here by the... Mountain Rage AFB. Wow, that sounds so cool. I'm going to put them here. Just going to drag these things away. Yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Put them here. And now we've got to put our, our enemies. So we're just going to get the DC units. Gonna put, them, put them here. Put this stupid flag here somewhere. Just to show that we're where the enemies are. And you're going to say, okay, wow. Just did a whole lot of bunch of stuff. But let's go over what that means. Here we have our units. This is where they would they where they will spawn. This is where they're gonna be starting. Okay? For every unit, you can see that they have a, a squad. In this case, it goes from Alpha to Bravo to Charlie Delta and a bunch of other stuff. Again, you're free to customize these as much as you want. Remove units, add units. You know, you can add pilots, a tank crew, or whatever the hell you want. No limitation of that whatsoever. Okay. And for the DEC, same thing you explained, but it's worth recapping. DEC is going to take the zone here, and it's going to fill up with dirty people so you can shoot them. Pretty much that. Now, as for an objective. We got this little thing here, but I'm going to save this for later. For now on, we're going to start covering the basics. And where it kind of gets into scripting, but don't be scared by the word scripting. It's really nothing scary. It sounds complicated, but in terms of the framework, it's real fucking easy. We're going to save up one more time. Control S, OK. Remember to save often. If you don't save often, you're a fucking idiot and bad things happen to fucking idiots. Don't be a fucking idiot. Mash that control S and save often. So we're going to go here and you're going to click on preview. And if your computer is not a toaster piece of shit like mine, it should be a lot faster. Any second now. Any second. Just. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay, so we were have our guys, and as you could have probably expected, it's a bunch of AI, they're running around, but they will be the players in your mission. Wow. Exciting, isn't it? I know. I have interaction as well. So, you have a little prompt that says that the C units are being spawned, blah 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 blah. You know, the good old shit. And I don't know why, but my... my this is weird. My, my game doesn't need to look, look Keep like your that. head down. Okay, There's no telling when more of those bastards running. will pop up. Hmm. But anyway, so there you have it. If you look in the map... Just stay put for a minute longer. There we go. Um, 
now this is really loud. Okay, um, my apologies for that. Um, I think is uh, is pretty loud, but um, hopefully it should be a little bit easier to hear me now. Can you even hear the gunshot? Okay. So if you look in the map, you're gonna see a few peculiar things. There's this little circle, blue circle, and just to clarify, that's a spawn protection. It can be turned off. I would teach you how. Really simple. But what I want you to pay attention to. It's this little magic square here. You have these nice little rectangles moving around. You got these thingies moving. These are the enemies of your mission. And they're regenerated by DAC automatically with little to no effort on your part. If you come here, you can see them going about their day. Where the fuck are they? Dirty shit. You line me right behind me, Sonny. There they go. Look at them going about and gonna shoot me. No, they're not shooting. Hmm. They will probably shoot me very soon. There we go, I'm dead. Okay, so that's the idea. So just so you guys can visualize and see, okay, he's not lying. These things actually do work and they happen to a certain degree. Cool. So, we're going to go and get started on customizing our ship. In order to get customizing, we made it so everything is like funnel in one file that you can just add it out and I'm not my, my my bad. Not one file, one folder. You can just go and find most of the stuff that you're gonna need to add it in one single folder. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your framework, um, and you're gonna go to engine. My bad. You're gonna go to mission, and you're gonna go to customize these files here. And then you're going to have a whole bunch of files. I'm going to open them all at the same time um, on the SQF editor. And you should probably be able to see them here on the, on the screen. Here we go. We've got all these nice little files here. And again, some of these even you won't have to add it. They're, some of them are kind of... You can just trust them as they come. Um... But uh, that should be fine for now. What I want you guys to get to now is this file here, the settings module.sqf. And the settings module is an interesting file because from th from this file, it's where like I'd say 80% of the customization in the mission is gonna come. Okay, you're gonna open the file, and if and you're gonna see here, we got a bunch of stuff that you can change. All of it is pretty well explained, but let's go over them just to make it easier. So we got here the mission uh, mission maker name. Nothing really too important. You can just put your own name here. Let's just go your gay name. Here we go. Mission version. Let's we're just starting so let's see 0 0.5. Okay. And now it comes a mission game mode. Okay? Whenever you're making a mission it's important to decide. Is it going to be a co-op or a TVT? Or a CO TVT, which is when you have player cooperating, uh, you know, player fighting, players fighting the AI while they're enemies in the, the enemy uh, AI team. Or some of you may know that as a counter co-op. So in this case, our mission is a co-op. So not a lot of problems. Just going to go here and say, keep it as co-op. And now comes the player information. Here's where we're going to say who are our players and who are our enemies. A note here that's important. For TVTs, one side is the player side and the other side is the enemy, sound, uh, enemy side. They're both players, but one side is considered to be the enemy side. It's um, a little bit of a uh, drawback from, having to, from designing it as a co-op framework. But it works perfectly fine for TVTs. It's just you gotta wrap your mind around that concept. 
So we're going to go here and say, well, who are our players? They're Marines, so they're West. That should be fine here. And who are uh, their colors? It's going to be blue. Let's just leave it as that. And there's a faction name, U.S. Marines. Okay, that should be fine. Now comes the side of the enemies. East as well. Nothing here to change. Red. And they're the Taliban. Well, I don't want them to be the Taliban. I don't think the Taliban would have a lot of business in Caribou. So we're going to change them. Let's see here. What kind of interesting units have we to shoot? Um, we have a four. We got Russians. We got drug lords. I mean, you know what? We never actually fought a drug lords army. So let's just say that you know they took over the oil rig to refine cocaine or some shit like that. Let's see here. Drug lords. I mean, no, no, that's a good question because I'm not sure if we have them on a DC. Let me take a quick look before I talk something. I say something stupid. Let's see here. Have we them on DC? Here we go. Drug Lord Army. IBR Drug Lord Army. Good. So, in this case, I'm just going to go with the Drug Lords. So, we're going to see here, instead of Taliban, you're going to write Drug Lord Army. Perfect. Save. Cool. Uh, we got here the Casualty Cap. Casualty Cap does what's on the on the label as soon as the group a, a set group dies it's uh, you know hits a certain percent of casualty the mission ends if you don't like that really simple just go here and use casualty cap turn that to false there we go completely no i like it turned on so that the mission doesn't just keeps going on forever you know if people are dead it's over you lost so let's get it true here you have the casualty group for the player that is the groups that are going to be defined as uh, you know if these gr if these groups are dead that's when the mission is going to know where it's going to end and in case you're not following where these groups are we're going to go back here to the editor so zoom in and let's see here um hand random person okay this guy here who is this guy group this delta uh, what is this? Delta GRP Blue. That's the same standard here. That's the, the name of this group. In this case, as you can read, we have Alpha Group Blue and Bravo Group Blue. In this case, the Blue 4 Alpha Group or Blue 4 Bravo Group, etc., etc. In case in point, these guys over here. Alpha GRP blue. Okay. Oh shit. There we go. So when these two groups here are dead, the mission ends. If you want to expand in this or subtract groups from this, it's the same idea. I want to have other people too. There we go. Charlie is now accounted for as well. For this group, for any groups that you create or that you remove. Same thing goes for the casualty group enemy. Alpha group op four, blue four, uh, Bravo group op four. Same thing. If you if if you would go to those things there, to the the, the op four units, they would have that same thing on them already by default. You don't have to change that yourself. Um, mind you, this is mostly for TVT. This is not mostly. This is only for TVT. As it says here, ignore if this is for co-op. Okay. We have here an evade and escape. This is for whenever you have a mission where the players have to reach some place after escaping. So if you, if you just, again, you put the name of the groups, you put the name of the object that they're going to have to, so in the case like a boat or something, or they got to reach an airplane. All you got to do is you put the name of the group, the name of that airplane, and how close they need to be of that. I don't generally use this, but again, you're free to. You can have the endings of your mission. They have the short description here, more endings later. And a body removal thingy. This, as it says, removes dead bodies. If it sounds like fickle or necessary, trust me, it ain't. Whenever you're playing a mission, bodies tend to pile up. And a lot of bodies means not a lot of frames. So be careful with this. If you say, okay, I want people to be able to loot the dead bodies, that's okay, but don't go putting here like that's basically disabling it and it's gonna be fucking stupid. So keep it to a, a, a sane time. 
uh, I know Royal, for example, doesn't like to keep it for over two, two minutes. And he has a good reason to. So I'm just going to leave it at three here. Should be fine for now. Um, and here we have this do not remove body. So for example, we have like a commander where you're going to go, you have to go in the commander, you got to kill him and take the evidence on his body. Well, if you kill him and his body is deleted, that would be fucking stupid because the evidence would just vanish into thin air uh, along with it. So you just go and you say, my commander. And there you go. Now the commander won't disappear and your gay ass mission won't fail. Cool. Coin module is this thing where you can basically place units. Um, this is a little bit more complicated, so I won't go into this. But if you do go here and then turn true, I think you're going to have some options to construct stuff as well. We'll, I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys to explore on your own later, but it shouldn't be too, um, it shouldn't be too important for your missions generally. Allow jip. If you put this to false, whenever you pull jip in your mission, they will be teleported away and uh, put into spectator mode. It's very important for TVTs because you don't have, you don't want to have people jipping in and you know spawning in places where they weren't supposed to and ruining the mission's flow. You got a Broma Field Repair, where it's, uh, this this repair script's really great, made by Royal, and it's it's really cool. You have the option here to enable it and to make it that only engineers can repair it. Um, once again, shout out to Royal, really great work you put in this. I recommend everyone using it. It's really amazing. Um, then you got the spawn protection, and the spawn protection is as the thing that I was mentioning before. If I put this here on true, and let's go on our mission again and preview it. I'm just going to turn the AI off because it's pretty annoying to me. As you can see here, you got this circle inside of uh, where we spawn. This is the zone of the spawn protection. If I go here and shoot this guy, he won't die no matter how hard I shoot him because the spawn protection is on. However, if I go back here and I say spawn protection is false and I go in again, If I shoot someone now, bam, nigga is dead. That's because the spawn protection, as you can see, is gone. Now, for some missions, for example, defense missions, or missions where the player starts in a moving vehicle or something, there's not really a whole lot of relevance in having a spawn point. But for missions where you're going to start in the base, gear up, have a briefing, etc., 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 it's a good deterrent for for griefing, for more on spamming grenades, or people accidentally doing dumb shit. So as a rule of thumb, I enjoy the spawn protection turned on. That is true. Okay. Here, as you can, as it says, this is a list with all playable units for DC to use. Add or remove as necessary. Now the important part is here is chances are that you can leave this alone. And as a chance to say, you can leave this alone. This is basically for DC. It doesn't matter. I don't fucking added this ever. Who the fuck gives a shit? Some variables here, whatever. I don't care. So that's it for the settings module. This is where you're going to go and set up your stuff to make sure that, you know, all the values are properly set. What we're going to do now is move on to the tasks. And, <clears throat> my bad. And the tasks are basically the whole point of the mission. When you start a mission, what you're there to do is to complete the motherfucking tasks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, and you probably never played Arma, well, you're a moron, but I will forgive you this time. You start the mission, and you're going to press J. And then you're going to see here our tasks. First off, I have a task where it's attack the objective, whatever that objective is, and optional establish an FOB. It says here you can't really complete this objective, by the way. 
and that's true it's just an optional uh, more um, how do you say it's just an aesthetic thing to illustrate my point the framework comes with a default um, like an example objective which is this this um, this red zone here if you capture this red zone the task will be completed well I'll, I'll elaborate on that later but if I go here there you go task completed attack the objective so there we go our ending screen it shows up objectives completed decisive US Marines victory should be getting a, um, a score count decisive US Marines victory got all the casualties the time played all the good stuff just gonna let a little bit more until it's over Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'll tab and the mission kind of froze in there. Okay, there we go. So now we got the, the briefing screen, the debriefing screen. <clears throat> we got the objectives were finished, the statistics, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mission objective completed, taken for blame, edited by my framework. Okay, continue. And now we're back to the editor. All right, this is all good, all dandy and fine. But how the fuck did you make it so when you can, when you step down here, you completed that one task? You know, how are these things in, uh, related at all? What the fuck are you doing? What is going on? Well, calm down. You don't have to swear at me, please. But, um, oh yeah, um, well. But, what you can do is just uh, look in a second. How do you get this done? In order to edit out your tasks, what you're going to need to do is go to this script call, call main tasks.sqf. And here you, you're going to have a bunch of objectives. Um, a lot of, some people have had some trouble with this, on, you know, understanding really how this works. So I'm going to break this down as simply as I can. These things here, these little lines, are the tasks themselves. Whenever you keep adding them, you're going to keep adding more tasks, okay? For each comma here, they separate a value of the task. So if you have this thing here, that's a value of the task. This here, that's another value, and that's another value, and that's another value. All separated by commas. Now, oh, excuse me. What, what these values are, that's where people get a little bit confused. This here is the ID of the task. Is how you're gonna how you're gonna identify this task later. If you're gonna say, okay, you had a task, cool, but how do I cancel this task? How do I complete this task? How do I make sure that it's you know fail or whatever? You gotta just go and use this thing here. You gotta give it a name, a reference, an identifier, an ID. Okay. Here is a title of the task. How it's gonna look for the player who's going to be completing it. This here is the description of the task. And this here is the side that's going to be getting the task. Side, again, reminder, is can be either west, east, uh, resistance, or civilian. Or as you, most of you know it, blue for, up for, independent, and civilian. Okay? Mission player side here is going to refer, reminder, to this, to the side of your players. This is why setting up the settings module is so important, because a lot of the scripts in the framework, they, you know, if, for example, if you didn't have, if you didn't have this thing here before, every time that you have to make a new mission, you have to go here uh, to the call task, and you have to come here and add it manually, west. And then you're gonna go and you're gonna make quest. And then you're gonna go here and you're gonna make quest. Okay, save. And then you're gonna make a new mission. Are you gonna be independent? Okay. Resistance. And then you're gonna put resist. You know, it's fucking retarded. It's really stupid. So here you have one single thing that already tells you what's gonna be. And you can just edit it very simply here right off the bat. So this is saying. 
give to the player a task, say, attack the objective, and in the description, we're going to say, capture the enemy objective. But, don't let me speak for you, let's just see how we can, how we can make that happen. We're going to go here, and we're going to copy this line, just break it down a little bit, you're going to paste it, just stab, give it a little space, and you're going to go here in task main, let's just see here, task example, okay, um, for the description, let's go with this is our example task. Okay, now for the description of it, we're going to say complete this objective to see how tasks work. Good. And the mission player side. Let's just go into the mission and hopefully we should have our task. Press J, and there we go. This is our example task, with the exact description as we place it there, and there you go. I'm going to go back. Now, okay, this is all good and dandy, but how do I make this thing be completed, or um, how can I, can I manipulate this? Well, the Bruma framework uses a set of scripts, which are great, made by this guy called Shuko, and this is called the Taskmaster. And the Taskmaster is a really neat script that you can use it with a lot of ease in order to manage your tasks. Um, we're going to go here in this thing called the Trigger, but don't be scared by it. Triggers are really easy to manipulate and use. I'll explain them very thoroughly in a bit. But for now, I want you to pay attention to this thing here. All these numbers and stuff and everything. Don't be overwhelmed by it. They're your friends. They're nice. All you gotta do is be cool. So here you're gonna say, you can see here there's this activation, sees by blue four, blah 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 blah. But here's already the interesting part that we're gonna look for. On activation, on act, since we're on activation, there are some keywords that we can look for here, right? There's some stuff that we can kind of eyeball. And even if, again, you don't know how to program, you don't know these really boring concepts and blah, 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 you can kind of ballpark and see what it's trying to say. We got here, task main. Okay, um, I remember this from somewhere. As you can see here, task main is right there. And it got succeeded. Oh, well, I mean, I know how to speak English, so succeeded probably means not fucking fail or something else and he succeeded and on call it's saying shuko taskmaster blah 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 blah, blah updates so if you try to put you know one and one together what you're gonna see is task main updates with succeeded and that's exactly what it's gonna fucking do it's going to take your gay task and it's going to update it. As with everything that you make here, you can just go, take your task example, shove it down here, hit OK, save our mission, and preview it. All right. I moved that thing down here, so we're just going to go and teleport. Lo and fucking behold, our example task has been completed. Its status has been updated as being succeeded. We've completed our task. Now, wait, you're probably thinking, why isn't our mission ending? Well, because we didn't fucking tell it to end. How do you do that? Once again, a matter of editing a single line. Real simple shit. We're gonna go here to our SQF editor on the main on the same script we editing before, and you're gonna scroll down a little bit. Now there's this bit that says check checks the tasks for the players, and then add the player's objective to this array. Now we have this thing here, this lone guy where it just says task main. Um, I'm gonna go and assume that this is where our thing that was completing the mission is. 
because that's what he was completing it before. But, you know, we're not really using task main anymore, are we? It doesn't really matter to us because we're not using it. What we are using, however, it's, a, it's task example. So, what you can do, you just go here and you add task example instead. So, now what is it gonna do is it's gonna keep checking, right? Okay, have these dumb niggers completed task example yet? No? Alright. Have they? No. Have they? No. Have they? Oh, wait, they actually have. Task example is completed. And test example is the only objective here. Now, for example, if I wanted to have test example and task main completed, what I have to do is just go here, add a comma to separate them, and I'm going to paste it here. There you go. If I was, if I was making a mission where all I wanted to do was kill these guys, there is pretty much a working mission. Pull out of your asshole, just like that. What I am going to do here is, I'm going to copy this. Again, don't have to worry about too much about this. But now I have two of these little square box, uh, these, uh, these rectangles, these blue rectangles, okay? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and the second one. And um, I'm just going to put it here instead of text example, text main also. So as soon as I step here, we're going to complete a test example. And every step here, the task main is going to be completed. And theoretically, as soon, only when I have the two of them completed, my game should finish, uh, should complete the mission. Well, let's see if I'm full of shit or not. Uh-huh. Detect the objective. This is your example task. Good. Let's teleport. Uh-huh, this is our example task is completed. Let's see if the mission ends. Okay. Probably not ending. Alright, well, let's see here as well. Attack the objective is not completed. Mm-hmm. And... Did we fuck up something? No, we didn't. Objectives completed, decisive U.S. Marines, victory. Awesome. Mission will end as soon as we have all the objectives completed. Okay? Now, this may get a little bit under some people's radar. Some details may go past you and you're going to be like, wait, I didn't get that. As always, guys, I'm listening. Feel free to ask me questions. Feel free to comment on the chat. I'll try to read as much as I can. I can stop for a few minutes to answer your questions and everything, but feel free to rewatch it as many times as it takes. Alright? Good on. So this is how you do tasks, how you, how you get your players, you give them objectives, and how do you make sure that as soon as they accomplish these objectives, they get a notifier saying, hey, good job champ, way to go. Now. I've been trying, I've been skipping around this issue for a while, I mean this issue, this thing for a while, and that is a matter of triggers, okay? And the reason why I did, I was kind of, you know, uh, light footing around it is because triggers are a, a subject that can get a little bit more complicated. They're not as easy and straightforward as the rest of everything else because they're highly customizable. You see, the thing is that triggers are, you can do a lot of things with them. You can do a whole lot of stuff with them. And so, they may be a little bit complicated. But, if you want to stick to the basics, if you want to stick, stick to the easy stuff, as you can imagine, they will be easy. Very straightforward. What is a trigger? If you press F3, and you double click in the map, you're going to have this insert trigger dialog thing. A trigger is this, whenever the conditions inside of the trigger are, not necessarily inside of it, but whenever the, the conditions associated to the trigger are completed, in this case here, the trigger will do something. And when they're not completed, when they're not running, the trigger will also do something. 
That's the basic part of a trigger. Okay? Where it says condition here, where it says this, that means this, this trigger, this guy right here, this, these things here. Okay? Whenever this is happening, then we're going to go and we're going to run these things down here. All right? If I want to say something else in the condition, I can. I can, for example, say true. So that means that this trigger will always be true. It was, it's always going to be happening. I can say, for example, false, and this trigger will never activate. It will never do anything. Okay? I can also, for example, say time bigger than 50. As in, the game has been running for more than 50 seconds. Okay? That can be done. Or I can say, for example, also, my variable equals to 10. I don't know what my variable is, but you know, something like that. So whenever my variable hits 10, the trigger is going to go and say, whoop, there we go, my time to shine. And bam, it's going to do something. Okay? Um, you know what, to give an example, let's just go with this one of my variable. Um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to this guy, to this one trigger. And here it says, sees by blue for blah, blah, blah. Okay. In the condition, I'm just going to say my var, my variable, let me just leave it at that, equals true. Okay, cool. When the my variable equals true, it's going to be, uh, my task example is going to be succeeded. Um, I'm going to use some, some a manipulation of variables. You shouldn't really worry too much about this, but it's a good thing to know. I'm going to save this. Let's go to the, to the editor. Okay, so uh, as we were capturing the same method to getting the tasks done, I'm going to go here, let's come here, let's, there we go, objective is completed, now let's go to the second one. Wait, nothing is happening. Oh no, what is going on? Well, this is no longer a trigger where you, that activates when you capture it. Remember, we changed the condition to this to my var equals 10. Or true, or I already forgot. So if we we we, wa we can walk around here, we can have as many units as we want. It's not going to do shit because this is not the a, the trigger condition is no longer equal to just this. Well, how do we capture this trigger now? There's one thing in the debug console here. It's a really neat ace uh, feature of Ace. You can just go here and say my variable equals ten. It was true then. Equals true. Fuck, why did I put, what did I fucking put in there anyway? I fucking forgot already. Uh, my variable equals true. Let's see where it goes. Hmm, for some reason it's not working. It's, it's really weird. Hmm. What I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong. <clears throat> um, I think that this is because um, I didn't initialize my variable. It must be something related to that. Let's just start something like this. Time bigger than, you know, just to illustrate the point about having to set up um, this other stuff. We just do time plus 10. Time is bigger than 10. So, just go here, console, time. Okay, should be going there. There we go. So now that the timer is bigger than 10, we accomplish our task um, as usual. This is to illustrate this point. You can use triggers coupled with conditions that you can set up yourself. And... Oh yeah, Nai, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I mean that that might work, but I don't think that that's uh, that's precisely what the, the the reason is um, that's happening. But you know, let's see what the method and I tried. Uh, this basically when you say when you just put the variable, it's assumed you know if I if I just go and put this just my variable, 
the condition is when my variable is true, right? Let me just go and um, let's see if that works. Hopefully it does. And we're going to hit debug console and say it's true. Now, there we go. Good job, Knight. There we go. Good on. So, as Knight said, you just put that. But, you know, this is all to illustrate a point, right? It's all to illustrate that triggers, they don't necessarily have to have these conditions up in here. They can have a whole lot of stuff that you can put in this in order to call within uh, call forth its condition and um, its activation code okay uh, in most cases what you're going to do is you're going to leave this and remember just one more time when you put this then you're calling all the other stuff here and again you can couple this for example you can say this and i can just write and this and i just put it between um um Parenthesis, not parenthesis, how do you call it? Oh, whatever. Um, and time is bigger than 10. All right? So when the trigger is activated and the time is bigger than 10, bigger than 10 this was going to do something. Let me just put 15 so I have, I have enough time to move. Okay, well, let's, let's see if it's true. Okay, we're gonna go and gonna teleport here. Okay, it's not really doing anything. Even though I'm here, it's just not there. But when you get to 15, there you go. So I hope that explains triggers a little bit better and how what they do. Um, on activation here, you have a whole lot of stuff. For example, you have like you know whenever op four is present. Whenever it's seized by off force, seized by blue force, seized by independent forces, you know, uh, whenever anybody steps in, whenever a civilian steps in, there's a whole lot of stuff, and uh, I encourage you guys to play around with them. The um, the the wiki in Arma has a lot of details about triggers. They explain every single parameter in a lot of detail. For now, we're just gonna leave it as that, and of course, you can edit the size of them, how they look like, and put this in the ellipsis. Um, usually just prefer to leave it as a rectangle, just a matter of preference really. And that's that, there you go, the for tasks, that's it. Uh, now let's try to recall a little thing about what we said about this mission. In the beginning we said, okay, I want this mission to be, um, I want this to be a mission where you go and you walk around and you capture these, uh, these two compounds here, the west station and the east station and that's it you got to capture these things and the mission is over well i think we have all the knowledge in order to achieve that let's just go here and now um, we're going to delete these things that we don't need important detail okay the last task has no coma you can't leave it like this it's going to return you an error it's going to scream at you that you're a fucking idiot that didn't listen to the knife gazing point here we go. Already got the game bitching at you, and you have no tasks. That's basically your medal of stupidity. Remember, if it's your last, your last task, remove that goddamn coma. You're gonna add some more stuff. You add a coma, and then you put it up with some more stuff. But don't keep it the last one with a coma. All right. Let's remove that. So now we got. Let's just name this one. Hmm, Task West, okay. Uh, what are they called again? Okay, capture the West Station. Let's see here. Seize the West Station in the Oil Bay. Okay, just copy this. I'm gonna move the coma here. All right. And now it's going to be task east. Capture the east station. Seize the east station in the oil bay. Oh, whoops. Wait. Just got to change the task. Once again, if you want your mission to end properly, you got to change this. Don't forget. So you go here. Task west. And task east. All right. Good to go.
Now what you gotta do, you gotta put your objectives here. Just drag them out. Um, let's get our triggers. Um, let's see how big is this? Should be about um, 200, 200. Let's just go to 150. Let's just 200, 200. Should be right about that. <clears throat> Let's just put it to 150, as tight as possible. Okay. I'm just going to make this marker in the same size as well. 150 to 150. Drag it on top of it. Perfect. Here we go. Then we're going to get this one here. I'm going to drag over the E station. Once again, it's just 150 to 150. Get the marker going as well. Uh, any second now. 150 to 1 fucking fit. Oh, fucking. Son of a bitch. 150. I don't know how to type. I am old and have Alzheimer's. Kill me already. Here we go. So now, when Op4 forces capture both of these areas, the players should be rewarded with that little nice green text. I'm just going to put these as an ellipses because I think it looks more uh, more attractive. It just doesn't look that square and ugly. Ellipsy. There we go. Look how pretty this shit is. Mmm, delicious. Just delete this. Save. And alright, we're getting very close, I'd say, already. You know, this is already a pretty good start. Um, now, here's what we're going to do. Since we know objectives and we know triggers, I think it's night time that we go and say DAC. Let's take a closer look on how DAC operates. important part in DAC it's this thing here once you understand what these numbers do you've mastered DAC do you know how to make whatever you want it's just a matter of going there there is a manual by the way bam bam alerts alerts there is a manual for DAC. There exists a fucking manual. So stop being lazy and just skim around that motherfucking PDF and you're gonna learn all the fucking questions that you have. Okay? But there is a manual. However, I will explain you the basics on how to use this. But once again, if you're thinking, how the hell am I going to use DC to add these stupid fucking gimmicks on my gay-ass fucking mission? Well, read the manual. Okay? So, this here refers to the zone identifier. This is the name of it. Gazing point, Z3. This here is the ID of the zone. Um, and this is a little bit, um, this can be a little bit tricky, but this is go basically this. You know what? I'm, and I'm not even going to say it. I'm just going to illustrate it to you guys. Let's give this thing, this zone, zone ID 3. Okay? Just hang, I'll just hold on to that number. Zone ID 3. Just going to copy this here. Um, I'm going to put the zone 4. Yeah, zone 4. Okay, save, whatever. Okay, let's just go. I'm going to press M, and you can look at the map. Okay, look at them. Looking good. Wait until DAC starts initializing. Okay, here we go. Here, here, here we go, our two squares. There are two DAC zones. Generating the waypoints. Generate the units. Just going to wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon, you're going to have some units popping up. Here we go. Okay, now you can probably see one very curious thing. There's this really thick red line connecting the two of them. 
And as you can imagine, that is because they share the two same IDs. They share the same IDs, therefore they are considered a, a sister zones, right? Units from, be, from each zones will roam between each other. They will move and assist each other. They're, they spawn only on inside its own uh, squares, but they will, they will move freely in order to reach the other zone. Okay? This may lead to unintentional stuff. For example, if you have two zones, one here in this place and one down here, you usually wouldn't want them moving across each other. You would want one zone protects its own place, the other zone protects its own place. Right? Right. But if you forget to change the, the zone ID, they will move to support each other and it's going to be annoying as fuck to fix. So careful of that. So now that you know about zone IDs, what are you going to do? You're going to go here and you're going to change this to something like 4. Okay? Whatever. Now, moving on. Ah, uh, if only I could fucking manage to click properly, huh? That'd be fucking cool. So we got our ID. You got this zero. This is basically where it starts activated or not. If you put it in one, it starts to deactivate it. If you start it in zero, it starts um, deactivated. It starts activated already. This is the events, whatever. And now here, all these numbers, these refer to the units that are be placed in. I'm saying this again. These four brackets and numbers here refer to what's going to be inside that zone, okay? This here refers to the number of groups. This here refers to the size of those groups. So, for example, uh, it goes from one to four, okay? Four being like a huge fuck ton of enemies, I think it's like it's an entire squad, and one being a single fire team. Okay? Twenty is the number of waypoints that's gonna be generated, and six is how many they're gonna use for Trouble Troll. Um, these last two numbers, I really never fucking bother editing because it's just something so arbitrary and like, you know, I mean, whatever, dude. I just leave it at 20. Six and it does a trick. I never bothered looking into it any further. You know, who the fuck cares? And this is here is for infantry. Okay. This here is for um, for light vehicles, such as, well, I guess LEVs are included here uh, for cars, trucks, um, all that kind of thing. This here is for tanks, for armor. Okay, for heavy, for, you know, like, th yeah, this is where, you know, tanks would go in. And this here is for aircraft. Now, the thing about aircraft is that the DAC is really annoying when it comes to aircraft. Because if you put them configurations not properly, or if you don't generate them on a good place, guess what? The AI is just going to say, well, fuck me, I'm not entering this thing at all. And I know Knight has some serious fucking problems getting DAC to work properly with aircraft. So, if ever you figured out how to properly make DAC work with aircraft, give me a call. I'm waiting. Anyway, this next thing here is the side of the units of the zone. Okay? It goes from 0 to 4. Zero being east, op four, one being blue four, two, I'm sorry, it goes from zero to three, my apologies, two being blue four, and three being, um, and three being the civilians, okay? It goes from zero to three. Eight, now, is the units and if you paid attention before you probably saw me going there and you know kind of just shuffling around those files and some people get confused with it they're like wait but how how does eight means you know uh that is going to spawn those those uh 
those insurgents, right? How does eight relate to that? Where does it say that, you know? And that's easy to understand, but even easier to fix. What you're going to do is going to go to your Brahma Framework folder, on your missions folder, and you're going to go to DAC. And in DAC, you're going to have a bunch of shit, a bunch of files. Most of them, you never have to edit, but you're going to have to add this DAC config units. And you're going to open that, and as you can see, we got all these units and all that shit. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Pay attention on the numbers and what you're reading. Here it says Russians, case 0. U.S. Marine Corps, 1. Insurgents, 2. And you don't have to be a genius to guess that by the time you get to 8, it's probably going to be related to the Pakistani insurgents or the militia. 6, 7, voila. Pakistani militia, case 8. So, you don't have to be a goddamn genius to assume that if you change this, to, for example, to 19, you would get some UN, uh, UN troops. But, you know, don't listen to my word. Let's just try it out. So, I'm going to put it here, 19. Oh, and another very important thing. Um, when you put, for example, this here, if I put it like this, what I'm telling DAC is, DAC, I'm a huge fucking faggot, rape my face, and I'm going to spawn independent units as op 4. I'm a huge idiot, and I hate myself. That's exactly right. You are a huge fucking idiot. Because what they're going to do is, they're going to spawn as op 4, and then they're going to look at their friends, and they're going to say, wait, you're an op 4, you're my enemy. And then they will start shooting each other, and it's going to be total fucking chaos. Your mission won't work. Bottom line, if you're going to put 19, which are the UN, remember, the UN are independent. So you're going to put here, 2. You're going to hit OK. You're going to save. And you're going to preview your mission. And hopefully we have some blue helmets just patrolling around. Let's just teleport. Fuck. Okay, see how it's yellow now? That basically means... Um, it's not, it's, it's an independent, independent yellow, um, you know, uh, all four red. I mean, geez, I shouldn't have to fucking tell you this. I mean, come on. Jesus, man, really? All right, we got our units spawned in. Let's take a look here. All right, there we go. Let's look at the guys. There they are. Here are blue helmets. I love bullying the UN. Alright. So as you can see, everything working alright as we expected. But we didn't want the UN in the first place, did we? We're looking for the drug militia. So now, using our newly acquired DAC powers, we're gonna go here. We're gonna see, okay, IB Air Drug Lord's Army. There they are. Oh, but we ran into a problem. See, this here is for the infantry units, the vehicles, the tanks, and the aircrafts. Okay? But, they're fucking empty. Meaning, they have no infantry, they have no vehicles, no tanks, or any aircrafts. Well, boo fucking who? How the fuck are we going to spawn our infantry, our vehicles, and our tanks? Do they have none? Dumb motherfuckers. Well, all we can do is add them by ourselves. How? Really easy. Just, you know, we can just copy them from the fucking Linger Rebels if it comes down to it, you know? Just go here. Copy. Paste. There we go. But do you want them having, like, cool, crazy shit like T-72s? You can do that, too. Just copy here. Remember, coma to separate, paste it, and our drug lords have fucking T-72s. Will it be crazy? Yes. Do you care? Probably not. Now I'll just go here, put it to zero. What's the number of them again? Case 18. Just put an 18 here. Okay. Save the mission. Hit OK.
And we're gonna go and teleport back there. Go to your oil bay. You know, just to, so they don't shoot my dumb ass, I'm just gonna make myself a civilian. Use this clever command. Player set captive. Oh, too late for that. Fucking hell. Damn, these guys are fucking cold, man. The console, players to captive true. Zach. Alright, now it should be considered a TV and therefore not a moving fucking target. Just walk around here. There they are. Look at our nice BRDM. Ready to fuck your shit up. We got the trucks. We got a Kamaz with some units. And let's see our infantry. There we go. Look at our drug lords. Look at them move. Look how pretty they are. Awesome. All generated by DAC. They will patrol. They will be patrolling this area. As soon as they come into contact with enemy, they will engage. They will fire. As they should. Um. Once again, guys. I really want to iterate in this one. DAC is, I don't want to use the word complex, but it's a great tool. You can do a lot of stuff with DAC. You can do a lot of stuff with DAC. Okay? And the like most things, the more you want to do, the more you need to know. But, I want you to guys to rest, have some, some, some peace of mind on knowing that if you want to make something basic, something like, you know, go there, shoot these guys, and that's it. It's, it becomes really simple. You know? It, you don't have to do a lot of advanced stuff. See what we just did just now? This really fucking simple, like, you know, 15 minute edit to, to, to scripts? That's it! That's all I need to do. You know? That's fucking it. I wish there was more things that I could be lying to you guys that you added, but there fucking isn't. All you gotta do is edit all these zones out, put their proper IDs on it, make sure that they have this, the, exact, the, the exact side, and you have the, the unit that you want. And there you go. You're set. So I'm just gonna go take the zone here, I'm gonna put it here, and we have our defenders to defend our objectives. We have two two objectives with units defending them and as soon as we capture them the mission ends. BAM! That's it. Awesome. Good job. Pat yourself in the back a little bit. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So, what is remaining in our mission? Well, we got our enemies. Okay, check. We got our objectives, mm-hmm, check. But, we haven't really done anything to their players, have we? Not really. So here's what you're gonna do. Um, recently, we, have, we haven't been getting a lot of players, so it would be a, just a fucking pointless exercise to make a mission for like a million people, you know? So, we're gonna just uh, excise some members of this, um, out of this, this, this roster. Just gonna go select these guys here. These are like snipers and uh, Charlie and Delta. Delete. Uh, you can hold shift delete, by the way, when you select a bunch of people and just shift delete and delete everyone. Or I can just hold delete and you mouse over like this and it's, you know, as long as you keep holding it, you're deleting people. Delete the medical team, delete the pilots. Alright, so we're left now with Alpha, Bravo, and Command and this, uh, this, um, reporter here. Okay, let's save our mission again. Um, now, you could very well change, you know, their faction. If you want to be like, you know, the Linger Army, you can just like, here you can just change to whatever you want 
but you know this would take um, this would take a while and honestly I mean anyone can figure out how to do that and you just double click here change affection you know if you want to like make uh, whatever else Germany man and then you change the role so you just make sure that you know you can make something clean and nice and everything but there's a little twist in all this that I'm saying do you think that if I if I if I start the mission, if you paid attention, I had an M14. Okay? Do you think that if I change this to, for example, German in a German unit, and I go, okay, team leader, and I do okay, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna preview. Am I gonna have a G36? Nope. As you can see. I am not the same unit that I was before. I'm wearing you know, German camouflage, German uniforms, the German flag, but my unit still has the same M14. And for that matter, still the same equipment. It's still the same loadouts. And then we can move on to the final chapter of this whole thing, which is customizing the player loadouts. What kind of shit are you gonna give to the poor bastards that'll be playing your mission? That is the loadout. So when someone says, oh wait, this loadout is fucked, that's exactly what happened. Someone messed up and the players didn't get enough ammunition. They didn't get the right ammo for their shit. They didn't get enough grenades so they can show up their assholes. That's the, what they call the load out. Now you're gonna be asking yourself, cool, how do I make my own loadout? And I answer you, simple. If you go to the player, you're going to see here that we have a bunch of shit. Like I told you before, by reading and paying attention, you can get a lot of really useful hints on how to solve these little scripting mysteries that, that, that look so cryptic at first. Starting off, let's just see here. Group this, uh huh. Um, I don't really, uh, okay. Set group ID, uh, okay. Set group ID, alpha. Alright, well, even if I read this just in English, I can say group this, set group ID, alpha. It almost sounds like a full sentence by itself, you know? Get the group that this asshole belongs to and set the group ID to be alpha. And alpha group blue equals to the, the group that this guy belongs to. Alright? That's one part. You don't really need to worry about this one, but just for the record, let's just keep this one straight. That's what it does. But the part that you came here looking for is this. ID equals SL. And then down here it says blue 4. Mission loadout blue 4.sqf. Well, I'm not really sure whether this is, but you know, we can just kind of go there and check it out. So we know that this guy is being called something as SL. Well, is everyone SL? Probably not. This guy here is Rifleman. This guy here, he's called, he has a JTAC thing to him. This one here has MG. This one has medic. Well, that's a whole lot of shit. But how do I edit this? Where do I see where this is? How the fuck do I customize this at all? Fret not. Let's just go back to our mission folder. Our framework folder. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna go to mission. Loadout. And then blue four. Okay? And there you have it. This is where the loadouts for the entire, all units that you have in your mission will exist. This is where you added them. This is where you add new ones. This is how you do it. Okay? Now, this may be a little bit overwhelming at first. It's a whole lot of shit in there. But I can promise you, take a deep breath and read the green shits 
read the comments, and you can decode a lot of what this means. Okay? Well, let's go through it just to make sure. The Broma loadout on the framework works like this. Every unit has its own type of weapon. Okay? Rather than saying, Commander, you have a M16 with an attachment, like when attached RCO to it. Fire team leader, you're going to have a FN fall on you. We don't go for specific weapons right away. What we do is we give them um, archetypes of weapons, you know, kind of weapons. So as you can see here, the CO has this thing called Spec Marksman. The Fire Team Leader has this thing called Common Rifle. The Marksman has this thing called Common Marksman. The MG has this thing called Common MG. The AT has this thing called Spec AT. And so on, so on, so on. Okay? The key to understanding the loadouts in the framework is realizing that, oh, okay, this here refers to something. So if I change that something, I can edit the entire loadout. And that is entirely correct. Because if you look up in here, there are references for all the shit. Common MG, M249. Common Rifle, M16A4, and etc, etc, etc. Now, this script was made because, at least especially for me, excuse me, especially for me, editing loadouts has been a pain in the ass. Because you need to go to, like, the wiki page, and you need to, like, you know, look at scripting guides, just to figure out the class name of your weapon. And it was really horrible. So me and Royal, we sat down together and he said, okay, how do we figure out this problem and how do we solve it? And so we came up with this really great solution. And once again, I got to give a shout out to Royal because he did an excellent work compiling a list with all weapons and armor together with their name and their magazine type. So if you go to the same loadout folder, you're going to see something called mission mission dash list mission list dot sqf i want you to open that and you're gonna see this massive fucking list compiled by royal which contains all the weapons including ace contents amazing work really good and saves me and i'm sure it will save you a lot of time as well the magic here being that you don't have to say, um, all right, what is the ammunition for this again? Uh, what's the ammo for this one thing? Okay, what's uh, wait, what's the ammo for this car again? You don't have to do that. All you got to do is say, okay, let's just give myself a an RCO, uh, a scar, shall we? So, okay, let's just go from the from the beginning. I know my guy is a rifleman. Okay, he's at the class of a rifleman, and he has here SL call on him. Okay, let's go through our blue force scripts until scroll down, CO, no, SL, oh, there we go, SL. Okay, I know that SL has a spec marksman at weapon. Spec marksman, hmm, all right, let's see here. Mm-hmm, no, that's not Spec Marksman, no, 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 oh, here we go, Spec Marksman equals M14 RCO, which I can assure you, not by coincidence, is the same weapon that the my character had. So if you're following me so far, you can probably put the dots together, and let's say, if I want an, a, a scarf, an, uh, let's see here, Let's get another uh, Mark 17. If I want a Mark 17 for my units, I can just go here and paste it there. Mark 17 CCO is a common 
Spex Marksman what Rifle. I'm going to save my mission and I'm going to load it again. And when I enter the editor, I'm going to have a Mark 17. There you go. A Mark 17. And again, I didn't bother looking for the ammunition class names for it. You know? I didn't fucking look after what it was called or what did it use. How many mags did it take? Or any of that shit. I just went to the list, looked for the... What the fuck is this guy doing? I just went to the list. I looked for it. I found it. Oh my god, this guy's just starting me. It's like fucking something else like Jacob's Ladder or something. And... I looked at the num at the name, I, I pasted it in, and there you go. Here. I have the fucking ammunition for it here. It, it would be in my backpack if I wanted it to. You know? Done. No extra work needed for this. So, for example, if I want to customize all the units on, the, on, the, on all these guys. You see all these niggas here? I'm going to make them so they use different stuff. Let's just, let's just run this over by, uh, by how to do it. So, the common rifle, well, let's see here, I don't want them having too much power for shit as a common rifle, so I'm just going to give them a SCAR. Okay, regular SCAR, alright. Common rifle GL, as in the common rifle with a grenade launcher, okay. Um, kind of SCAR, SCAR, holo GL, okay, a SCAR with a grenade launcher, okay, cool. Now, Let's see here, the common rifle with an RCO and grenade launcher. Well, sometimes the units don't even have that. But let's see if we got something here. SCAR RCO GL. Okay, good on. So we do have it here. We're just going to go, place it here. Now, what's next? Common MG. Well, there isn't a, uh, a Mark 17 variant of an, of an a machine gun. I think we're going to separate the big, big category. Let's see here. Um, machine guns, let's see what I can we use, let's give them a Mark 48, it's um, a little bit of a heavier caliber, but, you know, just for the sake of it, Mark 48, common marksman, alright, now for the marksman, let's give them something more powerful, a little more punch, let's give them a Mark 17, um, with an RCO, okay, Oh no, I'm sorry, this is the common marksman. So the, for the common, mark, common marksman, let's just give him a, a Mark 17 sniper variant. Um, let's give them a, for the special marksman, an RCO. Let's leave the common AT as an 84. You know, just for the hell of it, it doesn't really change any everything. Some stuff is just perfectly fine the way it is. Um, what are we using as default? The small. Mm, let's give them a Carl Gustav. Alright, let's go here, copy Gustav, place it here, now common sniper, as you can see here. Let's give them a Mark 17 sniper, as well. Oh yeah, you know what? For the for the marksman, let's give them a Mark 16 sniper. Should be making them more of a difference. And for the common MS SMG, we're not going to really change anything. Should be fine the way it is. All right. Well, if all works as I promised it would, we should have a team fully equipped with our newly established loadout. Let's take a look. Uh. I think I read, oh, my bad, I forgot a semicolon there. My apologies, I forgot to put a semicolon here. I probably deleted it by accident. Okay, this should be that. And as you can see, we've got our units now equipped. There's a Mark 48 here, and a Mark 16s. Let's find our um, our marksmen. They have the sniper variant. Commanders have the uh, the uh, Mark 17s with uh, the RCOs. So do I. And where are AT guys? We should have the Carl. There you go. State your so all set up. 
entire loadout done for all units in like what fucking 10 minutes or some shit you know didn't have to spend a whole day looking around and thinking of all this shit and remaking and putting you know adding ammunition and adding all that shit and blah 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 you just reference list find what you want go here replace it that's it that's fucking it you don't need to do anything else once again design for simplicity design so that you can just go and fucking do it and it's done all right but once again this may have some concept that you could, that you won't be able to wrap your mind around immediately i urge you i'm always reachable you know ask me for help knife you know i didn't understand this part can you explain this again can you run me through this again it's always my pleasure okay I'm sure the other people on the on the Broma chat will try to at least, you know, give you some directions and where to go. But if you come to me, I'm always uh, I'm always willing to explain these things again. Okay. So now that we have our units set up and we have our enemies and our objectives, it comes to the point where we just need to write the flavor for the mission. Okay? Flavor being the briefing. And a lot of people don't consider the briefing to be that important. And I don't blame them. You know, it's not super important either. It's not like a, an integral part of remission. But sometimes it may be. Because if you say, uh, if you have, for example, something like, oh, I'm going to have this helicopter who sometimes go flies around and, you know, he, he, he is, you know, uh, uh, scouting around the area. And if he finds the players, he will engage them. Okay? If you have something like that, it's interesting to let the players know. Not be an asshole and be, you know, just like, you know, throw the 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 helicopter at the other players without explaining anything you know that that's that, that's a dick move it's not fair to the players if you do that so in the in the in the briefing it's interesting to add like tips about the mission you know subtle tips about the mission that let the players form their strategy on how to beat your mission in a more interesting way because once again guys this is all for the players so the people who will be playing your mission and trying to enjoy it you know, so if you make your mission unenjoyable just because you want the people to suffer while they're playing your mission, it's just not interesting. It's just you're just not gonna really achieve anything. Okay, so the briefing exists for that. It gives your players a fighting chance to figure out how your mission works. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna open the briefing for a quick second. You're going to go to your mission folders, and you're going to go to briefings, and you're going to go to briefing west, which refers to, obviously, um, the side of your players. You're going to open it up, and then you got here our briefing. So we got, a, so we got uh, for the briefing, this, this format, um, which is the SMCS. I'm sorry, the MSEC something. I always forget to hold the, 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 the abbreviation for this, but it basically means situation, mission support, enemies, execution, and communication. Whoa, that was a mouthful. But if you read up here, you got the situation. Oh my god, my throat is getting really dry, man. I have no idea. <clears throat> Christ. So, what led to the current situation. Who is attacking who? This action is more related to the lore of the mission and if anything, so you can get creative. Meaning that situation, not really important. It's just like, you know, the backstory of your mission or whatever. So you're just gonna see here, like, I don't know who we're even fighting in. Drug lords decided to take over the oil, oil bay in 
caribou in order to start refining co cocaine. Oh no! Mission! Now here's where it begins to get more interesting. You can explain to the players um, what they have to do. Their clear-cut objective. Okay? Uh, I'm gonna copy, just cut this here for a second. So we're just gonna see here, alright. Oh, so your mission is to move to the oil bay and recapture both the east and the west wings. What are they called? Wings? Stations, my bad. The east, east and west, west stations. Okay? Now, there is an interesting thing that Arma can do, is that if you do this, it's a pretty cool trick. Uh, you put this tag here, marker, and you put marker, name, and um, you press F6 again, you can see the markers. To mouse over here, you can see like, this marker is called OBJMK. If I go here and put, yeah, it's already there, OBJMK, and instead of I'm just going to put like, east, and you're going to put another one, <clears throat> What's this one call here? OBJ make key underscore one. Um, east and west. Oh, actually, it's the opposite. East and west. OBJ make key underscore one. I'm gonna save. I'm just gonna. Um, if you press Shift and Enter, it previews your mission as um, like you know the lobby screen, so the the briefing screen, by the way. So you can, if you go here and you're in the mission, you see how west and east have this clickable thing to them. If you do click on them, it'll go where the marker is. It's pretty cool. East and west. It's pretty neat. It adds some, you know, makes uh, easier in the missions. Okay. Support. Here you list what you got. Well, this is a simple mission, so. I'm gonna go actually, and um, this reminds me, I'm gonna delete air vehicles, fuck you pilots, and delete all that shit. I'm just gonna get a bunch of Humvees for the mission, should be enough, right? Lining up here nicely, oh, they're on the opposite, facing the opposite way. Top. Oh, whoops. Mark 19, jeez. Here, here, and here. I'm giving them four Humvees. And um, just the front one is going to have an M2 on down it. Oh gosh, where's the M2? There we go. And the front one's going to have an M2 as well. Okay. So we're just going to have uh, four Humvees. Oh, Humvees. Two armed with M2 machine guns. All right. Enemy forces. Um, the enemies are known to be locally recruited um, gangsters without any prior training. There you go. Now we know who the enemies are. Execution. Move in and capture the oil bay area bam that's it here you have all the comms and everything and you know since nowadays we mostly play with uh, very small player counts you don't really need I me mean, usually like back in the day we would need all these call signs but today we just basically need this there you go should be good for your mission at least if you make mission for a drama of course but otherwise um, you're free to keep the other stuff so that's for the briefing. If you just go here and hold shift and press enter, you can see it on the notes. We have all the relevant information. Got our tasks, we got our platoon roster, also feature the framework, and we got our two objectives. Wow, Whew. that was um, that was a while, but hey, a working mission, and short of two hours maybe, you know. So 
Oh, you know, before I even start getting on finishing and wrapping it up, we need a name for a mission. I mean, there. I'm going to go to the team speak and I'm going to look on the Pentagon. Let's get here our uh, randomly generated operation names. Love this. Love this website. Let's see here. Can I add this? Oh, I'm going to add something here. Let's see. We're going to capture. F. Let's get a subregion here. Uh huh. All right. So okay, we got some some randomly generated mission names. Let's see what you got. Um, desert. Oh shit, desert girlfriend. That's a pretty good one. Oh, but it's not in the desert, so you want to make a lot of sense. Hmm, plunging snake. That sounds pretty hot. Nervous cheetah. Fuck, there's so many great names, man. This is the worst thing about this thing. This this page. Just just so much, so many good things that I just want to take them all. Mm. Operation. Ah, this is so hard. I hate this. Wait, did you see ejaculating impact? That's perfect. Ejaculating impact it is. Let's just remove this. All right. So let's name our mission. What you gotta do is gonna go and you gotta move to. Um, I'm just gonna move this away just in case you can see. Um, oh wait, it's not set up to capture that that far. Might be a problem. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> if you go on your editor, there's going to be this box written Intel with like, you know, the hour and the clock or whatever. Just click on it and you're going to get this little box. This is um, the name of your mission and the description. It's all you're going to really need to bother editing. So um, the naming standard that we like using in Broma is um, like this. Little bigger than sign so that a mission stays on top and everyone can see it. Type game mode as in CO, CO TVT, or just TVT. I'm going to leave it CO for now. CO, then on the space, number of players. I'm going to leave it at 20 players. Space dash space, and then number of um, name of um, um, name of the mission. Well, people were saying, let's just go with uh, ejaculating snake. I like that name ejaculating snake and then put a v and a version of it oh i think it's finished let me just put 0 0.8 and now description um u.s u.s marines are tasked with clearing caribou clearing a oil refinery in caribou from Local gang take over. Period. Enter. Control S. Save. Good. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and close all this shit here. Okay. And we're gonna rename our folder. This is important because when you save your mission, you're gonna have a file name, and you gotta make sure that file name sticks to whatever you have. Naming convention that I follow is, you know, I might give it a try to put this on the S. Let's just see if I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot of this. Let's see, window capture, windows, um, refresh, let's put a subregion. Oh boy, let's hope this works here. Okay, are people hacking my computer yet? Probably not. 
Um, all right, so there you go. There you can see the folders and everything. And as you can see, our folder is still named um, Broma Framework Automate Caribou. So we're going to name it more appropriately. So the naming standard that I like to follow is Mission Maker Name, in this case, nice, underscore, game mode type, player count, underscore, mission name, ejaculating snake. And there you go. Now we're going to go back to the, to the editor, load, and there it is. Knife CO20 ejaculating snake. Gonna hit OK. And there it is. The account and everything set up, ready to go. So I'm gonna go and save here. OK. Now I'm gonna save again and export to multiplayer missions. Alright. That is your mission that you're gonna send to me. And um and I will I will put on the server. Whenever you save a mission, it goes to this folder called, uh, on your Steam folder, you're going to go to Arma 2, and then it's called MPM Missions. It's going to be the last mission, like, you know, if you organize from a modified date. And this is pretty much that, you know? This is all you're going to need to make your, to, to make a mission. So, let's just recap real quick, you know, to make sure there are no no stones left unturned. Download the framework, put it on your missions folder, add it out the map where your mission's gonna start. You add it out the shit that you don't want, you know, like units that you're not gonna use, the zones that you're not gonna use, all that kind of shit. Get your DC zones, place whatever you want them, get your players, place them wherever you want them to start. Configure your DC zones to make sure that they do whatever you want them to do. Units, everything. Well, not a reminder once again, DC has a manual. So I recommend you read that manual. It's coupled in the Pentagon. There is a link for it on the scene page. Real easy. Um... If now that you got your DC zones, you got to go for your tasks. You got your task, you got to go to scripts on, on the call tasks. You got to set them up, put your tasks in there, add them to the completion thingy so that you know that when you complete those tasks, the mission will end properly. All right, check if they're working. They're working, good. Now go to your players, make sure you added their loadouts, get their stuff, what they're going to be carrying, etc., etc., etc. Done, good. Now get to the briefing, what do they have to do, where they gotta go, who they gotta kill, and what what they have. Done with that? Great. Now save, name your mission, name your folder, save it to multiplayer, and send it to me. Good job, you just finished the working mission, ready to play, and I'm sure people are gonna enjoy it a lot. Guys, once again, Thank you very much for everyone to show interest in this. Thank you very much for everyone who's going to use this framework to make missions. Even if you don't make them for Broma, that's fine. I mean, of course, I would rather have you mission making for Broma, but just by using them, I, I really appreciate it. And I hope it serves whatever you whatever you use it for, whatever you decide to use it for. I will try to put this on YouTube um, as soon as I can. Once again, I really apologize for the quality of the stream. My internet is a piece of shit. So is my microphone. I really have no better microphone. It's um, Microphones here are very fucking expensive. I look around for a good and cheap one, but, you know, they're all like some crazy amounts, like nearly a thousand bucks for, a, you know, a good one. No way I'd have that cash, so I'm just using this, my headset mic. I hope it's I, I, I come it's coming across at least understandable. But and, and once again, if there's any questions, anything that you'd like to know more, anything any subject that you're still struggling with, you got a mission idea that you need a certain detail in order to have a breakthrough, I'm always reachable on Steam at pretty much any time that I'm online. 
you know, and if I'm not online, you're free to drop me a message and I'll get to you as soon as I can, I promise. Once again, thank you very much. And, you know, next time that, is, that, that this kind of opportunity arises, then I guess I'll see you guys then. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys around. Good luck of your missions.